This cross number is a lot harder than it looks. It was the last question of one of the hardest math challenges in the UK. We have to fill in each cell with a non-zero digit, so we can't use zero, and it says they're not necessarily distinct, so we might use some of the digits more than once. So one across is a prime number, which is the sum of two squares, and it's only two digits, so we can restrict ourselves to the square numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81 but even then if you start trying to add pairs of these together you will find quite a lot of prime numbers in there so we probably can't start there three across is twice the answer to two down so this number is going to be double this number again very hard to start with that one uh, one down p times q where p and q are prime and q equals p plus four that looks a bit more promising so we need the product of two prime numbers those prime numbers being four apart. And the result is still only going to be a two digit number, so we can't use two big primes here. So the options really, we've got two, three, five, seven, 11, 13. Beyond this, the numbers are clearly gonna to get too big. To have two numbers here that are four apart, I could either have three and seven, and that would give me three times seven is 21, or I could have seven and 11. Seven times 11 is 77, so that would be our values of P and Q, and one down would be the product, so it would either be 21 or 77. But notice that three across has to be twice the answer to two down. So three across, this number here, has to be double this two down here. None of the digits are zero, so this really is a three digit number, 100 and something at least. So three across has to be at least 200 and something to be double that. So that means this first digit here can't be a one, so 21 is out, and one down must be 77. Now we can go back to one across and look at our list of square numbers, because this number now has to be a prime number that is the sum of two squares, but it's in the 70s. So when I think about the two square numbers I'm adding together, well, I can't use 81, but I could perhaps use 64. If I took 64, the only other square number that would bring me into the 70s would be nine, so 64 plus nine is 73. 73 is a prime number. I could also try 49, and the only one that brings me into the 70s would be 25, and that would give me 74. That's not a prime number because it's even. And then perhaps we could also consider 36 plus 36, which is 72, which is not a prime number. It didn't say it had to be the sum of two different squares, so we'd better consider that last case. But we're making progress because the only prime here is 73, and so we know that one across must be 73. We haven't looked at this clue yet, four down, 60% of five across, and this allows us to get one more digit here. So it tells us that this number is 60% of this number, and 60% is three fifths. So in particular, that means that I must be able to find three fifths of five across and get a whole number. And the only way that can be true is if five across is a multiple of five. That's the only way that three fifths will be a whole number because taking three fifths involves dividing by five and then times in by three. Multiples of five can only end in zero or five, but we know none of the digits in this problem are zero, so we know that this bottom right cell has to be a five. And there are a couple of ways to finish this problem, but I've made a little bit of space here because I'd like to do this in an algebraic way, which isn't the way the official solutions go here, but it's a way that I think you will find really interesting. And I'm gonna focus on the fact that three across is twice the answer to two down, and I'm going to introduce the letters X, Y, and Z for these three cells here. And now I'm just gonna write down this clue three across, that three across is twice the answer to two down. So I know the digits here, seven, X, and Y, and we can convert that into an algebraic expression for the number by saying, well, this would mean 700 plus 10X plus Y, right? X is in the tens place and Y is in the units place. And we know this must be double two down, so that's two lots of 300 plus 10X plus Z. We can multiply out the brackets here on the right to get 600 plus 20X plus 2Z. Collecting together terms, we get 100 plus Y minus 2Z is equal to 10X. Dividing by 10 and just swapping the sides and moving a couple of terms around, we get X equals 10 minus 2Z minus Y over 10. Now let's think about what the largest value this term can take is. Because Y and Z are both non-zero digits, so the largest Z can be is nine and the smallest Y can be is one. So at most, this could be 18 minus one over 10. At most, this could be 1.7. So X must be at least 8.3, but X is also a digit. So the only way for this to work is if X equals nine. So that means that this term must equal one. So the numerator must be 10. We must have two Z minus Y is equal to 10. So we'll hold on to that thought and come back to four down, 
which is 60% of 5 across. Well, 4 down is y5, so that's 10y plus 5. And we know that that's 3 fifths of 10z plus 5. Multiplying both sides by 5 and then multiplying out the brackets on the right gives 50y plus 25 equals 30z plus 15. Subtracting 15 gives 50y plus 10 equals 30z. And we've got a factor of 10 through this equation. So we get 5y plus 1 equals 3z. But we've got this equation for y and z as well. So we found a pair of simultaneous equations for y and z. You can solve these by any method you like. Let's multiply the first equation here by 5. That gives 10z minus 5y equals 50. I can add these two equations together. So the 5y's here cancel out. That gives me 7z equals 49, and so z equals 7. And plugging that back into either of the original equations gives you also y equals 4. So we've completed the cross number. We can see 397 times 2 is 794, and 45 is 3 fifths of 75. So we've satisfied all the clues, and I think that was a really satisfying cross number. And if you enjoyed that problem, why not have a go at this one next?